Well, Brianna, what's on your radar today? Is monkeypox the new COVID? By now, you're aware that after two years of COVID, there's a new virus on the scene, monkeypox. The disease does not resemble the novel coronavirus in transmission or effect. Unlike COVID, which is primarily spread through airborne droplets, monkeypox is mostly spread via close physical contact with lesions or body fluids of an infected person. COVID is a respiratory virus, while monkeypox presents clinically with fever and skin abrasions in the form of a rash or pox. For the first year of the COVID pandemic, vaccines had not yet been developed for the novel coronavirus, but monkeypox is far from novel. It was first identified in a colony of monkeys in Copenhagen in 1958 and is endemic to two Central and Southern African countries, to 10 countries there. Uh, for that reason, we don't have to wait for scientists to come up with a vaccine. Hallelujah. And yet, with 3,000 cases of monkeypox detected in the U.S. since the first case was identified in May, demand for the vaccine vastly outstrips supply. Now, why is that? Despite there being many differences between COVID and monkeypox, one similarity remains. The government has so far bungled its response. Here's the status of the monkeypox vaccine. In 2003, the U.S. government con contracted with the Danish firm Bavarian Nordic to develop the primary monkeypox vaccine called Genios. Although the vaccine for smallpox, which had been eradicated, is also effective for monkeypox, it comes with some side effects that are especially harmful to immuno immunocompromised individuals, like those living with HIV. But no worries, the scientists were on it, and the Genios vaccine is broadly safe and effective. In fact, over 1.1 million doses of that vaccine are currently uh, owned by the U.S. and were stockpiled in Denmark. But in one of the world's all-time worst cases of bad timing, the Danish vaccine manufacturer had moved production of the vaccine to a new facility that had not been inspected by the FDA. And although the old facilities had been inspected by the FDA, the new facilities weren't scheduled to be inspected until this coming August. Now, before any medicine can be distributed in the United States, the factory where it's manufactured must be inspected by the FDA. People might disagree, but I think that's a good thing. Remember the baby formula shortage? That happened in part because contaminated formula killed two babies and triggered the shutdown of major factories. And the contamination was traced in part to the FDA's failure to regularly inspect the facilities because of COVID. The agency skipped about 15,000 inspections due to COVID, and as a consequence, two babies died. Now, the problem isn't the inspection requirement, but that the FDA as an agency is failing to inspect in an efficient and timely way. Monkeypox was detected in the UK in early May, at which point the Danish manufacturer, Bavarian Nordic, did the right thing. It expedited its inspection application so that the FDA inspection could take place before August. But the inspection date chosen, July 1st, was still too late. New York Magazine reported that, quote, it's unclear why the FDA took so long to send inspectors to Denmark. The agency regularly conducted virtual inspections of drug facilities early in the COVID-19 pandemic. Over 1 million doses of the vaccine were literally sitting in freezers in Denmark, while high-risk Americans lined up around city blocks attempting to pull together as a community and stop the spread. Even worse, the FDA's European counterpart had already found the factory in compliance with the FDA standards last year, but the FDA refused to honor that inspection. Now, this mismanagement is galling on its face, but it's even worse in the context of a two-year pandemic in which so many of these lessons should have been learned. I thought PPE and ventilator shortages taught us hard lessons about manufacturing essential medical products overseas. And even if we did uh, devote resources to domestic production, we also need to develop the expertise to build products like ventilators, expertise that comes from education, vocational or otherwise, which in this country, you well know, is far from free. The average vocational or technical school graduate graduates with $10,000 of debt in the United States of America. 
Biden bragged yesterday about making billions available for school ventilation, free boosters, testing, high quality masks and more. But in May, he urged states and cities to use unspent money from last year's $1.9 trillion of COVID relief to hire more police officers, even as there remains no correlation between more police spending and lower crime. Also, let's get some perspective on this. According to the White House's own website, the American Rescue Plan provided $122 billion for schools. That money was not specifically earmarked for ventilators and filters, but can be used for that purpose. But as we all know, schools already have a ton of financial demands on them. And whether schools are even using the delegated funds to update their HVAC systems isn't being tracked on the federal level. According to a Georgetown University study, not a federal study, school districts had plans in place to spend about $4.4 billion on HVAC updates. Compare that amount to May's $40 billion Ukraine aid package, or this country's $800 billion military budget. American schools were already crumbling, and the children inside of them were suffering from asthma and other respiratory issues before COVID. And Ukraine somehow got an infrastructure package before we did. No wonder faith in government is at historic lows. If you want people to comply with public safety measures, you have to actually make life easier for them, not harder. The onus cannot solely be put on the average citizen to stop COVID or monkeypox through masking and isolation. I mask and I encourage masking, but it's also important that city and state governments do their part to install the air purification devices that can lower COVID transmission by 41%, especially when you're dealing with kids who are unlikely to be super compliant when it comes to masking anyway. You can't just tell people to stay home. They need paid leave. Monkeypox requires a 21-day quarantine, a devastating time to go without pay for anyone, but especially the tipped workers who have been on the front lines of the COVID pandemic, and now this one. People with monkeypox symptoms are reporting difficulty being seen by a doctor in the first place. This, I would argue, is why it's important to have a universal healthcare system so that people have trusted relationships with primary care doctors and don't fear being secretly charged for tests they cannot afford. A recent Yale study showed that more than 335,000 lives could have been saved during the pandemic if we had had universal health care. How many members of our community are we willing to lose in the next pandemic simply because corporate politicians can't win without their big pharma donations and simply because we cannot learn any lessons from our nation's biggest and most recent tragedies? Mm. Well, I'm glad you discussed um, the government failures, of course, because I, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm very much worried we're making so many of the same mistakes uh, with monkeypox, yeah. which does not, as far as we can tell, have nearly the same likelihood of spilling out uh, to the general population. You're not gonna contract it by just kind of breathing the same mm -hmm. air as people who have it, thank goodness. Yeah. So we're not you know, looking at a pandemic that's, that's just gonna be raging for everyone, but it is a really awful disease uh, that is spreading right now uh, among a certain subset of the population and uh, that we're not better prepared to deal with it is maddening. Yeah, it is, it is frustrating to see some of the same mistakes being made. I mean, we're two years into this, and a lot of the excuses that kind of passed muster in the early days, there were supply chain issues, right? Mm -hmm. It is difficult to ramp up production of X, Y, and Z. Okay, you're caught flat-footed, and we, you know, 50%, I believe, of masks are manufactured in China. We couldn't get them. We couldn't get this on the other. I get it. But it's two years now, and it is frustrating that there hasn't been more of a mobilization to changing the way that we do things, especially in the public health context, to better protect American citizens. At the same time, when we're seeing a, an enormous willingness by the Biden administration to spend huge sums of money yep. to fight whatever they need, wars. whatever it takes. Yeah, blank check. Yeah, I think that's not a good use of that money. So your schools got all this money for the, the COVID stuff, and there wasn't a lot of direction on mm -hmm. exactly how they could spend it, which on one hand, uh, I, I wonder how you feel about this, actually. I am conflicted because I sometimes think, or I often think, if the government's going to give you know, monies to institute, money to institutions, I, I often oppose it. But, well, if you're going to give it to them, just, just write a check. Yeah. Don't get overly cute about what they're supposed to do with it because people know what they need money for mm -hmm. better than you do. That said, because of just the not 
good knowledge about what exactly to do with COVID and what interventions work. I mean, you had schools that spent that money on those stupid little plastic shields, for instance, <laughs> that now we know do nothing or, or even or even might cause spread, cause it to be more spread than there would have been. Yeah, and, and so look, it's, even if it's, it's a not, hard call. You know, people are doing their best. And I, yeah. I tend to agree that people in their various localities know what they need. But also there was a lot of misinformation, a lot of genuine confusion about what the best interventions were to lower the spread right. of COVID. And moreover, when you have institutions where teachers are already dipping into their own small paychecks to buy school supplies in some of these really underserved districts, I don't necessarily blame people for having different priorities, even though from a public health perspective, I would argue that it might have benefited folks to earmark specifically funds right. for some of these big renovations. Because remember, these these ventilators, these new uh, filtration systems, they've been long needed in a lot of these crumbling school districts, right? But these are expensive interventions relative to some of the other things that are going on in a school. And I can appreciate why one's individual judgment might be to say, okay, that's a big pot of money. I can solve 15 problems instead of just this one big problem with the, with the HVAC system, even though, again, for public health reasons, the government's interest in having, is in having that money going toward clearing the air. When I saw some school districts, for instance, use the money to improve their outdoor facilities, like mm. a nicer, uh, which make some COVID rational sense or did because, well, maybe we're going to ha have more classes outdoors. Mm -hmm. We're going to do all that sort of thing. Now we're really not going to do that because it's not, it's not so concerning that you can't have school indoors. But so having nicer facilities is good, but maybe that money would have been better spent doing the ventilation or something. So there's a, the changing nature of the disease itself yeah. makes priorities that look smart a year ago no longer look smart. Yeah. So I don't know. And it's fine. We're going to learn. I just want people to learn from those mistakes and be responsive. I'm not even interested in you know, blaming the teachers or the school districts for making the wrong choice. But I do think we've learned some lessons. Let's let's do the right thing going forward. And unfortunately, this FDA debacle with uh, monkeypox is all too familiar from my taste. We're we're seeing some movement on this front, though. So hopefully, at least the the government will learn from this most recent mistake going forward. I think we're going to have a real uh, medical expert on uh, monkeypox and the COVID pandemic, et cetera, on with us next week. So I'm looking forward to that, and we'll have more rising in just a minute.